today's episode, we take a look at the topic of anxiety and its impacts on one woman's life, and how, through her own desire and persistence, she was able to overcome anxiety and take back her life. Anxiety does not have to be something that holds you back in life, and it is very possible to overcome and break through anxiety. Today, we'll hear the remarkable and empowering story of Stephanie Cassiopo, who went from surviving to thriving by breaking free of the grips of anxiety, and how you too, or anyone you know that deals with anxiety, can do the same thing. And be sure and listen all the way to the end for the most important piece of advice that Stephanie shares with us. All right, welcome everybody to another episode of the Be Well, Be Safe, Be Happy, Eat Ice Cream podcast. And today on the podcast, I have with me Stephanie. And Stephanie, you and I were talking off camera a little bit. I read about your story on Facebook and you have a very powerful story today. So I just want to say real quick for anyone listening, this is an absolute must listen to episode. We're going to be talking about anxiety and what it does to a person and how to move past anxiety to move through anxiety. And Stephanie, I know you have experience with this. So I'm going to turn the floor over to you and start wherever you would like to start. Okay, well, thank you for having me on. And um, where to start? Um, Anxiety has been part of my life for as long as I can remember. I don't remember having moments where I didn't have it. Um, So it became kind of just very normal feeling to me, but something I knew I struggled with constantly. Um, There's just so many different forms of anxiety. And for me, like it came in a form of like not being able to breathe. Um, A lot of times it was in like large groups of people. Um, When I felt out of control, when I feel like I didn't, couldn't control the situation, that was something that gave me major anxiety. And, um, I did try counseling and I did try um, getting medication for anxiety. For 10 years, I tried to get medication. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, to help with it. And it was always the crazy thing is that one of like, the side effects for anxiety medication is anxiety. Oh, or okay. depression. Yeah. The side effects were always way worse than, than the anxiety itself. So I would try a new one and give it a couple weeks and it wouldn't work for me. So um, I just gave up after a few, actually, and I wouldn't say it's 10 years. So it wasn't just a few years. It was 10 years of really trying to, you know, get some kind of relief and counseling and none of, none of that worked. None of that helped me. Um, And so I just stopped taking the anxiety medication at some point and just learned to deal with it. There's like coping. Yeah, let me let me break in real quick. You said something interesting. For as long as you can remember, you've had anxiety. So as like even as a small child, a a little girl, you remember having it. Do you know was it modeled for you, or or how did it how did it become a part of your everyday life? I guess. So I mean, I just don't remember what it was like to not have it. So I I mean, I couldn't have had it when I was ten, but maybe I did. a lot of the anxiety that I had came from not having emotional stability in my life as a kid. Um, I had a mother that was very like emotionally unavailable for me. And that was, that was very hard to deal with because I was constantly, even as a kid dealing with those emotions on my own. So it was very like a dysregulated type feeling. And that's where the anxiety came from. I was always scanning the room for somebody like that was going to get angry or like trying to look, oh, wow. you know, I'd walk into a room and I'm like, oh, that person, like I'm drawn to that person. But why am I drawn to that person? Probably because they're like the, they're the oddball out. They're the one that's going to probably cause problems. They're the one that's probably louder than most. Like that one drawing my attention, probably because it felt unsafe, you know? Mm-hmm. So was it kind of like yeah. just a vibe you would pick up on then or something like that from a person or? It just, it was being very sensitive to, it would be sensitive to toxicity is what I would kind of label it as sensitive to people that were going to create problems and stuff. So it's constantly like walking into a room and scanning a room for issues for those people that were going to make me uncomfortable. But those were the, always the ones that wanted to talk to me too. 
Oh, you know? wow. Maybe something yeah. about the energies attracting or, or something like yeah. that. I'm, I'm curious, yeah. how did this throughout your life then, how has this affected the, the quality of your life in terms of like home life, family life? The one thing that we all have in common is that we all want to live the best possible life. We all yearn to find our purpose in life, to live that life of passion and fulfillment, and rediscover who we really are. The truth is, most of us don't know how to do this, and we don't know how to get out of our own way. Our mindsets, fears, insecurities, and self-doubts prevents us from reaching our full potential. If you are someone who yearns to break through and rediscover your authentic self, find your purpose, and live that life of fulfillment, then join my new online community, Rediscover You. Rediscover You is helping people just like you explore their passions, find their purpose, rediscover their authentic self, and live their best life. Inside Rediscover You, you will learn the tools, skills, and strategies that I have implemented in my own life, as well as with many of the clients I have worked with, to help them rediscover their authentic self, find their purpose, and live their best life. From understanding your purpose, to knowing who you are, or what you want your life to be about, you will get it all inside Rediscover You. Join me inside the Rediscover You community. I'm really looking forward to seeing you inside there. Life, travel life, any of that. I would say every single portion of my life. So, um, I mean, later on, I learned that my anxiety was caused by like my um, childhood traumas. Okay. The things that I went through as a child, that's where my, I got my anxiety. But I didn't through all the counseling that I had done, they never talked about any of those things. So I figured those things happened when you were a kid, you get over them, they're fine. You know, you, it's, you've moved past it. But then as I got older, I realized that like, I was, I mean, I was married young in an abusive um, relationship with my husband I ended up leaving that and I went right back into another toxic relationship for 10 years after that. Oh, wow. um, and, and then when I was done, when I left that toxic relationship, I thought, Hey, it wasn't me. I'll be fine. I just got to, you know, I'm going to find a healthy relationship now. And then I would struggle with relationship after that and the relationship after that. And I couldn't figure out why until I realized that like subconsciously, I was picking people that were like my mother oh, and that, oh, yeah. and that was creating, <laughs> and that was creating like these same scenarios over and over again, no matter what. And these people were always like emotionally unavailable. Always. That was the key thing. Like I felt apparently comfortable with people that are emotionally unavailable. That's what you grew up with. Yeah. That's how you mm -hmm. were accustomed to. That was your norm. What, let me ask you, is it fair to say that anxiety was controlling your life then? And is there a, a, a turning point that happened for you that you just said, you know what, no more, I, I need to take back control of my life? Or how did you begin to transition out of or past or through anxiety then? So what happened is I had realized that all of those all of those scenarios I was still creating for myself. And then I had a really amazing counselor that I, I ran into. Um, I, I sought him out and I found this awesome counselor and he helped me figure out that we have like these deep core beliefs about ourselves that we learned as children. Yeah. And as soon as I learned that it was like a light bulb went off and I was like, I want to heal those things. I want to hear all those things. And and he used to laugh at me because he was like, we did we did more work in that two hours than I've done with people in an entire like six months of counseling <laughs> because I just wanted to get rid of this things. I didn't care anymore that I was afraid to deal with those emotions. I was so sick of anxiety that I wanted to heal it. I didn't actually even know I was going to heal the anxiety. I just wanted to heal those traumas. So he did something called EMDR therapy. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. I have not. No. I honestly don't remember what it even stands for, but it was like um, a way that he could like rewire your beliefs in your brain to rethink things. It would almost like he would move his hands across back and forth 
And he said it would go from one half of your brain to the other half of your brain. And somehow that rewired these core beliefs that I had. So we would bring up a very traumatic event that happened when I was a kid. And as he was doing this back and forth movement, it would, I, it was like harder for me to grasp that memory. That memory wasn't as painful anymore. And then when they get that memory got to like a, a very, you know, like I could barely hold on to it and it didn't have as much strength anymore. Then he would start to tell you, tell you like, what's a better belief that you could have about this? And it would like rewire my whole brain. And I didn't know it at the time, but I was doing all this work and then it would bring up all these other things. And I actually had more anxiety going through all of this. I was like, I don't know why I have anxiety right now. I can't even tell you. Um, but then when we were done, like doing most of the work, it was like, it was just like an epiphany hit me that basically everything, every moment, every experience I had had my entire life, all that anxiety had led me to not be the real person that I was like, those experiences are not me. I had like this huge spiritual awakening and the anxiety literally left me. I healed like overnight. It was like almost like a miracle. Um, was this no longer five years ago, me. 10 years ago or no, this is six months ago. This is six very months ago. Oh, it's probably been eight, nine months now, eight, nine months. Yeah. Whoa. Eight, nine, yeah. And and I I apologize, Stephanie. Do you mind if I ask your age or age range? I'm thirty-eight, so I've been. But I was struggling with anxiety for probably thirty plus years, maybe twenty, thirty years. Yeah, something like that. Wow, I wish I would have like met you and interviewed you six, eight months ago, and kind of done a compare and contrast. Then then I, and now, I yeah. could tell you, I'm not the same person anymore. I'm really not. It's a it's amazing. Um, I'm like, I've had this moment where I like kind of was always overthinking everything. And then all of a sudden I was just like, I can feel myself living from my heart. And it's like, self-love was a big part of this too. I had to like learn, se learning self-love was huge. That was, that all went along with all the EMDR therapy, um, but also seeking out self-love, learning that I've never, even though I've always been kind of a confident person, I've never really loved myself. I was always um, just just what wasn't experiencing self love, and I and I thought I did. I told people I did, but that was very very fake. You know, I wasn't actually loving myself. But I got to a point where I where I definitely love myself now, and that was a that was a journey in itself. You know. I want to I want to touch on that self love a little bit more but for our listeners I want to go back and just touch on a, on a few points that you made that are so critical for anyone listening and feel free to jump in Stephanie and and correct me or if I if I get your interpretation of what you said incorrect or something but anxiety you mentioned about you know switching your brain we'll just say from point A to point B as I call it and in our society our culture today we tend to look a lot for external solutions to an internal situation uh, for me personally my interpretation is anxiety comes from within the way we think about things things that happen that are buried in our subconscious beliefs that we don't know about and rather than applying an external modality like yoga or something like that we have to go in and and understand this is really important because I had to do the same thing. What, what's going on internally, either subconscious belief or something like that, that is causing me to project uh, this uh, anxiety. And then how do we, and then we switch, like you said, the mindset from where it was to where it's meant to be. And that's such a, a critical part. And you mentioned two things. One, you were sick and tired of anxiety and that you wanted to change. And that for anybody listening, that is key. That is where change starts. That is where change happens. 
when you are sick and tired of the status quo. That's what happened at the very beginning of my journey when I was 50 pounds overweight. I got sick and tired of being sick and tired and I wanted change. And so anybody listening, if you're depression, anxiety, whatever it is, you've got to be sick and tired of the status quo, want to make that change and want to break through it. And no, Stephanie, you're a perfect example that it is possible to break through. Like you said, medication did not work. Uh, but this uh, mind, I'll just call it mindset type therapy, the e EMDR, or EDMR, right. uh, what you said, uh, that got your mind to shift. So anybody listening, again, you have to want to change. You've got to have that desire. You've got to be sick of the status quo. You've got to apply internal modalities to an internal problem, working on changing how you see yourself and, and the mindset. What you fo- I always say, what you focus on, you become. Uh, and subconsciously, we're all focusing on, I was focusing on, I'm fat and overweight, lethargic, pathetic. That was my mindset 15 years ago. And that didn't work for me. Um, is that kind of sum up a little fairly accurate, Stephanie, yeah. right there? Yeah. I, my mindset was always, I'm unlovable. Okay, I learned yeah. that from, my, that was a big one. I was unlovable. So going back to the self-love, you know, mm-hmm. of like, I am worthy of love. There's no reason why I shouldn't be loved and things like that. You have to, you have to talk yourself through all of these things. You really have to get to a point where like you really believe in yourself and you, because I think the answer to any problems is within us. We don't Thank have. Thank you. Thank you. That was my whole point of what I wanted to say. Yeah. The answer is within us. Yes. Not an yeah. external modality. Yeah. Like a medicine, like a pill. Yeah. What I had learned, I think one of the biggest things I had learned about anxiety that I would tell anyone is that when you have anxiety, you're living in the, in the future. You're living in the future. And I remember the the counselor telling me that. And if you have depression, you're living in, in the past. Mm, um, very good. Very good. And when, so one of the things that really helped me with tools wise when I was suffering with anxiety so bad was living in the moment. And, and I just explained this to my stepdad just the other day. And he was like, I've never even thought of that. And I was like, you know, live in the moment, like simple things. Like how do you, how do your clothes feel on your body? How does like, like what's the furthest sound that you can hear? Like grounding, like teaching yourself. If you're living in this moment, you're not having anxiety because you can't worry about the future when you're living in this moment now. Same thing with, with depression. Cause I also struggled with that for years too. But all of those are gone now. Thank goodness. <laughs> wow, that, oh, well, we'll do another episode on, on the depression side yeah. of this. You, you're making two key points, this idea about self-love and living in the moment. How, a lot of people always ask, well, how? That's great advice, blah, blah, blah. But how do I do that? How, what would you tell someone who was struggling with living in the moment with, with loving themselves that knowing, like I struggled for years with I am worthy, I am enough until I did the internal work to realize, oh, I am worth The one thing that we all have in common is that we all want to live the best possible life. We all yearn to find our purpose in life, to live that life of passion and fulfillment, and rediscover who we really are. The truth is, most of us don't know how to do this, and we don't know how to get out of our own way. Our mindsets, fears, insecurities, and self-doubts prevents us from reaching our full potential. If you are someone who yearns to break through and rediscover your authentic self, find your purpose, and live that life of fulfillment, then join my new online community, Rediscover You. Rediscover You is helping people just like you explore their passions, find their purpose, rediscover their authentic self, and live their best life. Inside Rediscover You, you will learn the tools, skills, and strategies that I have implemented in my own life, as well as with many of the clients I have worked with, to help them rediscover their authentic self, find their purpose, and live their best life. From understanding your purpose, to knowing who you are, or what you want your life to be about, you will get it all inside Rediscover You. Join me inside the Rediscover You community. I'm really looking forward to seeing you inside there. I am enough. How, what would you tell someone who's struggling with that right now, the self-love uh, and the belief in themselves? And, and I think that self-love has to start with, with changing those core beliefs and going to, to 
I don't know if you've heard of like inner child work, but oh, yeah. I did a lot, a lot of that. <laughs> yeah. You've got to go back to that little hurt person because even though we think, hey, that happened when I was six years old, you're still carrying those emotional traumas with you yeah. for your entire life. Um, until you heal those, I think that those those are the things that cause all of our sicknesses and illnesses, whether they be like physical illnesses or mental illnesses. I also told, I think I told you that I had struggled with the trichotillomania, which is a form of OCD. It was in my um, Facebook. It's a form of OCD where you actually pull out hair. Some people pull out their hair. I pulled out my eyelashes. My eyelashes are all grown back now. I'm very excited about that. And um, it's just all of those different forms of mental illness were created from emotional trauma that was stored in my body, you know, an internal thing. Yeah. We always think it's external. Uh, Let me, one thing I want to point out too, Stephanie, you worked really, really, really hard, but what I want to make a point, especially for anyone listening, you worked really hard on yourself on breaking through the anxiety on becoming a different person re reprogramming your mindset uh doing the internal beliefs like you just said changing those inner beliefs is that fair to say you worked really really hard on yourself and that's my point i want to make you can break through any of this but you have to work really 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 hard on yourself it's not taking a pill it's not going to the gym and doing 20 sit-ups or whatever that's not what it's not that kind of working hard it's the internal right. I, work, working hard on yourself. Yeah. I don't think, and honestly, I, I get it was hard, but in the moment, you know, what's harder is living with that anxiety. Yeah. I, I was so sick of that. And, and I think that a lot of people, and I know I did, you get comfortable living there because you're used to the anxiety and the anxiety is normal for you. And so when you realize that you don't have to live there, forever and you can actually just I mean I know those like traumas and stuff they're painful and you don't want to go through them but like if you could just release those emotions from those traumas and and feel them one last time you can let them go and then live anxiety free anxiety free living is is just it feels very surreal but it's amazing you know it's like what what i feel like i'm missing something this whole time but i'm like this is great you know well the last almost 20 30 years compared to the last 9 months what what would you say like night and day different night and day difference it's like complete bliss and just happiness because now yeah, i love myself right now, yeah. i love myself i don't have anxiety you know what another thing that healed at the same time with healing all that trauma was I no longer have a fear of heights. That was something I can go in like large crowds of people now and be like totally fine and chill and relax and be I'm so much more easygoing because the anxiety really um, makes me not a person that I want to be. It makes, you know, it would really mess with me in crowds and stuff. I would get very angry, you know. Um, like, that's I not me. Feel your vibe right here through through the internet, that kind of chill, relaxed vibe. You just mentioned something else, real quick, real critical. The anxiety makes me someone I don't want to be. Who? And this is I always coach my clients. It's not who you don't want to be; it's who you want to be. So, who is it that you are or that you want to be, Stephanie? Well, now I really just want to spread this whole message for everyone. I want to be a person that expresses love to everyone, no matter where they're coming from. Um, You know, no matter if they've had a bad day, I want to be able to spread love to everyone. But um, yeah, that's the, that's the kind of person that I want to be and, and keep living anxiety free. (laughs) Yeah. I love your smile and your energy. It's just, it's radiant. Yeah. I I would have loved to have done this nine months ago and done a a then versus now type of, of a scenario. Uh, Stephanie, we're kind of coming to an end here time-wise, but is there anything that you would like to say to anybody about any of this that you haven't had a chance to so far? I would just say that I think there's a, maybe with just society, everyone just kind of believes that we have to deal with anxiety and depression and things like that. And, and we don't, we don't have to live there. And I know it's hard and I know everyone has different levels of trauma. um, But I think, all of them can be healed. I do. I think you just have to dig deep 
I think counseling is important for sure. Um, but digging deep and then learning to love yourself. Every single person in this world needs to learn to love themselves. That that's on my biography on, on my, my webpage. That's what I say. My three miracles, my awakenings. Number two is that I learned the most important relationship you will ever have on this planet is the one that you have with yourself. That's absolutely true. Yeah. Yeah. Stephanie, it's been a pleasure. I usually at this stage, I didn't ask you at the beginning, but I, I give a chance for promotion. Do you want anybody to reach out to you or do you have a, a website or Facebook page or something if somebody wants to contact you or? No, no, I, do. I have a gardening website, but we're oh, crazy. Okay. Today, so I don't want to put that out there. <laughs> okay, yeah, sure, sure. No problem. Well, if anybody does want to reach to Stephanie, feel free to contact me and then I'll get in touch with her to see if it's okay if I can pass on your, your information or anything like that. Yeah. But, uh, uh, just a, a final message for anyone listening you absolutely can break through depression anxiety any of that and I'm just going to go on and, on and say this I'm not a doctor but I believe it can be done without a pill without a medicine uh, I believe it can be done by working hard on yourself doing the internal work and being committed being determined uh, putting in the effort consistency on yourself to change your beliefs to rewrite those stories to to create a new identity if you know anxiety is who you don't want to be let's create an identity who you do who you do want to be that that loving person love yourself and and peace and and all of that stuff it's absolutely i've battled anxiety i've dealt with depression i'm learning these skills more it's exactly what you did uh stephanie um going inward reprogramming and and creating a new identity and, and learning to love yourself that was a key piece of the journey that i didn't know about till about a year ago uh, the inner child work, uh, all of that stuff. Yeah, good stuff. Stephanie, thank you. I guess uh, any anything else real quick? No, thank you so much. I really appreciate my the opportunity to share this story with everyone. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And for anybody listening, I'd super appreciate it if you got anything out of this episode that you share this as far and wide as possible. Again, let's beat anxiety. Let's beat depression. We can do it. Uh, and one way we can do that is by sharing this episode. So please share it far and wide. Wherever you listen to podcasts, please hit that subscribe button. I would love it if you did that and if you left me a five-star review. Until next time, at the end of every episode, I always say, ride in line with getting breaking through anxiety. Be well, be safe, be happy. And I always like to say, eat ice cream. That's part of my story, my journey, how that came in. A scoop of ice cream every now and then never hurts anyone. Stephanie, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. And everyone, thank you. We'll see you next time. So much.